will be a blessing to each of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's we open up in prayer because we believe in prayer. Amen. Because God is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. Hallelujah. So we're going to open up in prayer. We're going to continue to be a people of prayer. And a matter of fact, I wanted to thank those who was here on Friday night. As you remember, every Friday night we have a prayer night right here. So those who was here on Friday night, we just want to say thank you for being with us. Amen. So let's we open up in prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful God. And we're giving you all praise. And we're giving you all glory. And we're asking you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you touch your people this morning. You know what's the needs of your people, what your people are going through. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you give your people a victory because you are faithful, God. And Father, we're asking you, Lord God, that you bless this service this morning. We're asking you, Lord God, that you speak for Pastor Larry, Lord God, as your Use him as your instrument. Use him as your vessel, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we welcome Holy Spirit into this place this morning. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Touch your people, those who need a healing in their bodies. We ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ will manifest. And we thank you, Lord. We're giving you all praise. We're giving you all glory. We thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God. We thank you, Lord, that you are God of restoration. We thank you, Lord God, that you are God who is healing them. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this place. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this place. We welcome you. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. His presence is here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is so good. He is so good, God. So faithful. He is a faithful God. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Larry is in the house today, as some of you know, and some of you probably remember that he just come back from Pakistan. So and he gonna it's gonna be continue to share that. And I believe they're going to go to Pakistan maybe in another six months. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, praise the Lord. So, right now, as you see, we have a minister of music, mighty man of God with us. So, just be in the presence of the Lord. Just worship the Lord. And be blessed, okay? All right, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to the church this morning. I'm not going to teach you any new things from last week, I don't think. Until we get some overheads and song sheets, I don't want to bore you with too much music. There are some booklets at the front with the words of some of the songs that we may or may not sing, but they're only going to be for the faster or the slower songs. I wasn't uh, I wasn't uh, gifted enough on my computer this morning to figure that booklet program out. 
We learned this last week. Let's try this again.
own book by next week that covers all this stuff. In the meantime, I gotta figure out how to carry on. I was asking Pastor Larry what he liked, and he mentioned this song. So it's old, but and, and he'll have to come back in the middle of it, but it goes like this. We'll just make sure he likes it, so we'll make sure that we can sing it by the time he gets back. It goes like this. Thank you. 
there somewhere.
Father, in the name of Jesus, let your word manifest in our hearts like never before. Bring us to that place, Father, where we will see, know, and understand who you are and who we are in you. Let us see ourselves as you see us. God, you are holy. You are just. You are merciful. You are loving. You are caring, God. And we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for your holiness. And Father, I ask you that you will anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth. And that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. All that you that say, Amen and Amen. Well, God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us today. Welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Glory to God. How many of you how many of you uh, appreciate our music uh, the a musician. Amen. 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 We thank God for you and thank God for sending you our way. You don't know. We've been waiting on you. <laughs> Amen. We've been waiting on you. Thank God for you. Amen. You're a blessing. Amen. Amen. Now, we deal with this message here for some time. Amen. Not because it's something that I chose for us to hear or receive, but I believe that this is the Lord's doing. Amen. I believe that this is the Lord's doing. I'm not going to keep you long today because I'm going to do my job, though, but I'm not going to keep you that long. Amen. And I want you to, uh, to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you today. Because you are the reason that we're here. We have been blessed to gather in this place for some time now. And God is uh, showing himself strong simply because we have honored him by keeping the doors open even in the, the tough times. I told God that as long as he pays the bill, I'll keep the doors open. Amen. And I kept my word, and God has kept his word. Amen. And so I know now, I, I see that God is 
uh, what I, I'm going to tell you like this. There's a spirit of restoration upon this church. We have gone through a lot of hardship. But God has shown me by the spirit that there's a spirit of restoration that is coming upon this ministry and upon this people. So I'm telling you now that God is going to restore your heart. He's going to heal you of your wounds that you have experienced throughout these years. Amen. There's a I like what he says in the book of Jeremiah 20. And I think verse number 14, I think. Amen. That he will restore, he will heal you of your wounds. Amen. God wants to heal you of your wounds. Amen. Is that Jeremiah 20? Let me look and see because I might... Because God wants to heal you. God wants to restore you. God wants to make you whole. Amen. How many of you want God to, to touch you and make you whole? Because see, a lot of us, that we, we go through life. We have challenges in life. Amen. We, we experience challenges in life. Amen. But then at the same time, we know that God wants to bring us to a place where we will experience his best. Glory to God. Jeremiah 30, 17. Yeah, that's it. Jeremiah 30, 17. I know it's Jeremiah. Yep. That's it. Thank you, Lord. See, God said, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. God wants to restore you. God wants to heal you. God wants to bring you to a place of inner peace. How many of you know when the enemy started to bombard you, he bombard you, he get your mind off of the, the, the purpose, he get your mind off of the things that God intended for you to begin to focus on. He get you to focus in on your situation gets you to focus in on your circumstances, gets you to focus in on the things that you're going through rather than to focus on what he has said to you. And when, he, when, when that happened, you've been derailed, you've been detoured, you've been sidetracked, you've been pulled off your, off your, off your point. You see, God wants us to stay focused. And this is why so many in the church today have lost focus because they have allowed the circumstances and the situation to cause them to, to look every way except to God. And this is why God has given us this message for, for this year. And I believe this, because of this message, because of this message, there's a, there's a, 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 a fresh awareness of God's presence in this church and upon, and upon this ministry. See, I was sitting right here in this chair right here praying not too long, about three, about, about four weeks ago, about a month ago. I was sitting out in this chair, in this chair praying because we have prayer every Friday night. And God showed me, I, told, I think I've mentioned it before, but it better be mentioned again. It's, it could be mentioned again. It showed me Moses. He showed me the hardship that Moses went through. It showed me the the, 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 the thing that he experienced once, once he went out to visit his, his, uh, his brethren. And he killed the man. And he was driven away because he knew that Pharaoh was going to destroy him, going to kill him. So he ran for his life. And a lot of you have been running for your life. You just don't understand you run, you won't be just like Moses. Moses ran for his life. He thought that his life was coming to an end. So he took off. He ran. And he ran to a place called Midian. And he joined himself to a priest of that 
of that region. And he married one of the priest's daughters. And he became a shepherd boy. And he began to keep the sheep on the backside of the desert. And as he was keeping the sheep, he saw a bush that was burning that was not consumed. And he was called. I mean, God just began to nudge on his heart. And I believe God is nudging on your hearts today. He's wanting you to turn aside and see why this bush is burning and not consumed. He wants you to turn aside and see why you have gone through so much in your life and you're still standing. See, a lot of people have gone through what you've gone through and have given up. They've turned back into the world. But God has kept his hand upon you and you are still here. No matter what, how much hell you've gone through, no matter what situation you face, no matter how bad your body has been racked with pain and sickness and disease, you are still here. I can count on my faith on one hand ministers that I know that started when I started this ministry that have gone back and left the ministry. And I told God then, I said, God, they didn't call me. You called me. And I said, I told God then, as long as you keep the doors open to the church, I don't care how many people come, I will stay here. And when that pandemic came, everybody locked the churches up. People started just doing ministry at home, on the internet, from home, or whatever. God told us not to shut down. We stayed open the whole time. People... That was our busiest time. <laughs> that was our busiest time. We had a church full, amen, during the pandemic. Amen. Because everybody else had closed the church. And now God has given us an opportunity. He's given, he given the church an opportunity right now because God is bringing restoration to your hearts. He's bringing restoration to your hearts. Moses, he ran for his life. He ran right into the hand of God. And God, as he come into the presence of God, God told him, what, what did the Spirit of God tell Moses out of, out of the burning bush? What did the angel of God say to Moses? Take off your shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is what? Holy is holy ground. Holy ground. You see, God, when God deems something as holy, that means it's set apart for his purpose, for his plan. See, not only are we commanded to be holy, but places and things can be deemed as holy. Remember the temple. The outer court, the inner court, and then the, 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 the center court. The center of the court was what? The holy of holies. If you wasn't right, you couldn't go there. And then there's another object that was holy. The Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> right here. <laughs> A replica of the Ark of the Covenant. And, the, and, 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 then the, and, and, and God deemed it as what? Holy. Yes. Amen. So God, when God talks about holiness, God is not just talking about us being holy. He talks, he, when he, See, the, the ground what Moses stood on, God called it holy. The place where the people came to worship, God called it holy. God is looking at us right where we are. Amen. And I like what God said to, let's go to our, 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 our scripture in the Luke, Leviticus chapter 19, verse number, verse number 1 and 2. Leviticus chapter 19, verse number 1 and 2. Now this scripture has been with me all year, so y'all, I know y'all probably know about heart now. You should anyway. I I could, I could quote it, but I still like reading it right out of the Bible. I still like reading it, even though I pretty much quote it now. Amen. Because, you see, what God is saying to us, what God is saying to us, he said, he said it before. Notice what he said right here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation, unto all the congregation, of the children of Israel 
and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And I like verse number three. We're going to have verse number three to it this time. He said, Ye shall fear every man his, his what? His mother and his father, and keep my what? Yeah. My Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Turn ye not unto idols. And see, this is what a lot of people have done. They have walked away from the concept and from the precept that God ordained for them to walk in, and they began to serve things rather than serve God. And they've turned away from God's ordinances. They've turned away from God's laws. They've turned away from God's concepts and precepts that he had given us to operate in, in the earth. God gave us a, 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 the ability to rule and to reign in this earth as he did. Remember what he said in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26? And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over all the work of his hand. God has given us the ability to be like him. But to be like him, you got to understand what he's asking of you. He's asking you to separate yourself from this world. Come out from among them. To be holy is not something, it's not a religion, it's a lifestyle. To live righteous is not what you do, it's how you do it. Your manner of, your manner of conduct, your, your manner of communication, your lifestyle, how you present yourself, how you conduct yourself. Does it portray the life of Christ? You know, I was walking in Home Depot just last night. And uh, there was a federal judge in the Home Depot last night. I was looking at Christmas lights and he put his eyes on me and he couldn't get his eyes off me. And and, and when I came by him, he picked, it out, he, he picked out a way to start a conversation with me because I had my U.S. military cap on. And he started a conversation with me. And, and he said, I, he said, I, you, some, he said, something different about you. I, you. You kind of stand out. I said, what is it? He said, what is it? I, he said, are you still in the Army? I said, uh, I'm not in the U.S. Army, but I'm still in the Army. What, he said, what do you mean? I said, I'm in God's Army. That's right. Amen. And then I, he said, he said, that's great. I like that. He said, Will you, you pray for me and I'll pray for you. He, 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 he was asking for prayer. So I prayed for this judge. I prayed for this judge. And then uh, <laughs> he said, uh, wow, I, I feel that. <laughs> he was excited. He said, wow, I feel that. Amen. Because I held his hand. I put one hand on his shoulder and I held his hand. He, and he, when I got done praying, he stepped back and said, wow, I feel that. And then after, I got, after I've done ministering to him, the presence of God then got stirred up on my life then. And so I went down this aisle and I ministered to two more people and led them to the Lord right there at Home Depot. Two of the employees of Home Depot led them to the Lord right there at Home Depot. Amen. You see, this week and last week, everywhere I went, you know, at least I've been... Been, been ministering to people, been leading to the Lord. Why? Because of the presence of the Lord. It's, re, it's, I mean, it, it's began to be more strong upon my life because of this message that I'm teaching you. And as you yield to, the, to this word that God has given me for you, you will be, you, you will be a, a, a bearer of this same anointing. God wants me to share, with, to, 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 to give you what he gives me. He's not giving this anointing just for me to walk in. He get, he's giving this anointing for me to share with you so you can walk in. So when you are minutes, when you're out in your place of business or, 
or when you're out shopping or what, when you're out just walking around doing something, God wants this same anointing to rest upon you so people be drawn to you and that you will be able to minister to them. You might say, well, pastor, I don't understand. How could I minister to someone? I'm, I'm, I need to minister to myself. You probably do. But when you give, it's given back to you. Because see, you, 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 may not, you might need ministry to yourself, but when you give ministry, it's going to minister back to you. The same anointing that you release is going to come back upon you. It's going to come back to you. God is showing us that his word, see, Peter never understood how, God, how righteous God was. How, uh, he, didn't understand, he didn't understand about the holiness of God. But after Jesus died, Peter had a vision. The Gentile was sending men to him to ask him to come. And while he was up on top of the house praying, while they were making food ready down in the house, these people come. And Peter had he he he, he was sitting there, he was he, he just went out into the spirit. And all of a sudden he saw these animals and stuff. And, and, and he said, Rise, Peter, slay and eat. And Peter said, I have never eaten anything common or unclean. None of that has ever touched my mouth. And God said to Peter, what God has cleansed, that called not thou common. And that happened what? How many times? Three times. That's right. And then it was taken up. And at the third time, the Shema, I feel the presence of God in this place today. This man, these two men came to the gate and they were requiring for Peter, asking for him. And he, and God said, go with them, down to nothing. And so he went with them. He, he, they, he said, why, why, wherefore have you come for me? And he said, uh, Cornelius was praying and God told him to send to Joppa for one called Peter. But well, he's at Simon House praying, something to that nature. And uh, listen, folks, God revealed His holiness to him right there. It wasn't something that was strange. It was something that he had seen, but he had never realized it before. See, a lot of times God called us to walk in holiness, but we still have not come to the place of understanding what God said to us. This is why we look at holiness as some kind of uh, uh, a way of, of uh, setting us up for fall, to, to be a failure, to be defeated. God didn't set you up to come to know him to cast you down, to make you feel like a worm. Amen. He setting you up so that you can begin to see yourself walking in his grace. Amen. See, when God talk about righteousness, he's talking about his character. He's talking about his way of life in the earth. That's what Jesus, Jesus showed us God's way of life. He demonstrated the power of God. Why? Because he walked in the presence of God. When you're walking in the uprightness of heart before God, you're going to walk in his presence. His glory is going to rest. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was praying here Friday. Then all of a sudden, because I, I had my eyes closed, but all of a sudden while I was praying, I, I saw the glory of God fill this place. I saw the glory of God fill this place. And I began to thank, I was say, I began to thank, say, Father, thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. The presence of God engulfed me in his presence. And God gave me a word at the end of our prayer that night. And God said that I'm bringing restitution upon you. To you. And I said, 
anybody know what that word means? Because I never, I, I never heard that. I've heard it before, but I've never, it never been spoken toward me, and I didn't, I, and I needed to understand what God was saying to me. How many, anybody know what that word means? In, what do you mean? In the legal uh, terminology, it means if somebody has falsely, falsely caused you loss, they are to restore. There is a law requires some sort of restoration, and the judge interprets it and applies it. This is what God said to me. Restitution is coming. What the devil has meant for evil, God has turned around for his glory. Why? Because I yield from my way to his way. And what God does for me, as you yield from your way to yield to his way, restitution is coming to you. Healing is coming to you. Your finances is being restored. Everything that the devil has stolen, I'm telling you, is going to come. 2023 is going to be one of your best years. It's going to be one of your best years. Restitution is coming. Everything that the devil has stolen, everything, that, every false accusation has been spoken against you to, to destroy you, those words have been canceled. I've had many words spoken over me, even by my own family members. There was lies. And what's so bad about it, they my brothers and sisters. Biological. So it doesn't matter who it is that is talking against you. God will vindicate you. And he will cause you to see yourself as he sees you. Amen. Amen. Peter went to Cornelius' house. And he ministered to Cornelius and his household. That was good. That was. That, I mean, that that really that really sh uh, just showed me how God really care about us. How God love us. Amen. Amen. Now in verse in First Peter. Now look at look, look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter seven first verse number one, and then First Peter. I'm going down next. We're going to go back. I think I left off right in this area from last week. Yes. First, uh, second, second, second Corinthians chapter seven, chapter seven, and verse number one first, and it says, "Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness." In the fear of God. And see, this is one of the areas that most people, this is why most, a lot of people are falling in the church. They have no fear of God anymore. They feel like they can do whatever they want to do, live any way they want to live, say whatever they want to say, do whatever they want to do, and, and because no one see them, they think that it's all right. And they forgot about the all seeing eye. The all knowing. God sees it all. He hears it all. But we have not lost the fear. We have lost our reverence. And this is what God, this is what God is, this is what God has called us. He called us, He, he called us uh, out of the world, because the world is 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 getting darker and darker, and he's calling you to a place in him where you can be protected. But you got to open up your heart, and you got to you have to begin to repent. You got to repent. 
And I'm, talk, talk, I'm not talking about just saying some words, Lord, I, I'm so sorry, I did this, I did that, and God forgive me. No, it's time for you to turn around. It's time for your life to turn around. You've been walking this way so long that you feel like it's okay. And you have sealed your heart with the heart iron. And you have walked away from the one who called you out of darkness. You have yielded to, see, who, what, what servant you yield to, the servant you're going you're gonna to be bound to. And when you yield, when you yield to God, you, 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 you're bound by those spiritual laws. But if you yield to Satan, you're, bound, you're still bound by spiritual laws. And they're going to work for you, whether good or bad. They're still going to work. Just like the spirit of prosperity. If you don't sow no seed, you are going to stay in poverty. Just like salvation. If you don't openly confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're going to remain a sinner. God is calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Notice what, he's, notice what he said here again, verse number, verse number one. He said, having therefore these promises, see this is a promise that God gave us, dearly beloved, having therefore these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Cleanse ourselves. What we need to be, what we need to be cleansed of. What is, it, what is it that is in our life that is keeping us from seeing ourselves the way God sees us? What is it that is calling us, that is holding us aback from the things of God? Is it uh, the way we are uh, viewing people, the way we are talking to people? Is it the way we are uh, uh, acknowledging people? Is it the, the lust? Is it the perversion? Is it what? What is it that is keeping us from the, the things that God has called us? You see, only you and I can, can, can uh, answer that question. God is not going to interfere with your lifestyle because he's given you the power to change. He's giving you the power over your will. You can do whatever you want to do, but God has given us the ability to change. He's given us the ability to yield. He's, he's, given, us, he's given us a way out of our situation. Amen? So he said, cleanse, your, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Once we begin to cleanse ourselves from this filthiness of the flesh, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, a lot of us, we, 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 we still have these issues. And this is, why, this is why you're stuck in a rut. Because you don't want to let go of the past. God said in, in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He said, All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. God is calling us to purify ourselves by the washing of the water and the word. How are we going to do that? First of all, we have to be reconciled. We have to acknowledge God. I've had trouble. I have, I've been dealing with this area of my life so long that, God, I don't even know if there's any hope for me. I tried and I tried and I tried. And, and God said, yeah, I see you've been trying, but you have only tried in your own ability, in your own strength. You have not yielded to me. You have not yielded to me. You tried to do it yourself. You see, God wants to come in. God wants to to be a friend to you. God wants to be a partner with you. God wants to help you. Amen. He wants to bring you to that place where you can see yourself walking as God called you to walk. Look at now 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. <coughs> verse 14. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. 
Notice what it said, verse number 14. Where, verse number 13, I mean. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. See, our minds is the battleground where the enemy attacks us and causes us to, to think on. See, whatever you think on the most is going gonna, is gonna to determine the outcome of your situation. Whatever you meditate on, whatever you thinking on, is going to is going to determine whether or not you're going to yield to the will of God or not. And let me tell you something: when God called me to preach this message, my mind—I tell you what—my mind came under such an attack. You cannot, you will never believe the things that I had to go through when God called me to preach this message. And I don't even talk about those things. Why? Because it's not worth mentioning. I just, I just tell you that I'm, I'm, I'm going through a lot of spiritual warfare. Why? Because of the message that God has given me. Amen. And now we at the end of the year, this message is beginning to unfold to my heart where I begin to see myself now rising up to a new level in God's presence where the anointing is making room for me. Amen. So when God, when God, when as God deal with my heart, I begin to see my, I begin to see how, I begin to see the purpose of all this. Amen. Now, you might be, you might be just like Moses. You might be broken. You might be, you might think that there, you've been uh, wrong so long that there's no way back. Look what Moses did, and did, did God take him back? Did God take him and use him mightily? God can restore to you everything that the locusts, the cake one, the caterpillar, the palm one had eaten. Restoration is yours if you, if you really desire to be restored. Restoration is yours. The Bible said in, in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 13, Wherefore, gird up your, the loins of your mind. Be sober, be, be sober, and hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse number 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to what? The formal lust in your ignorance. See, we still, we still look at our past. We still are drawn to our past in some ways, in some areas of our life. And, and it still holds us in bondage. God said, let it go. Let it go because your past is the thing that is keeping you from the light that God's called you to walk in. How can you walk in the light when you're still trying to hold on to the darkness of the past? Light and darkness have no fellowship one with another. Once the light comes on, darkness flees. Amen. Amen. You're going, to be, you're going to yield to one or the other, and God has given us an opportunity right now, folks. God has given us an opportunity to choose life or to choose death, to choose blessing or to choose curses. Amen. So now, look, now notice what it says here, verse number 14 again. As obedient children, not fashion, them, not fashion yourself according to the form of lust in your ignorance, but as he which... I like this part, verse number 15. But that he which had called you is holy. See, he's talking to us. So be ye holy in all what? Manner of conversation. All manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. And this is not something you can do in your own strength. Because a lot of us, we, we, we don't really understand what we mean by holiness. We don't really understand it. And therefore, because I, God told me to be holy back all them years, and I never understood what God was saying to me. Never understood it. Not one time. And just this year, as I've been ministering along this line all year, I'm finally coming to understand what God said I understand what he meant to me, what it meant to me. When, because see, God separated me 
when I was in my mother's house, God separated me from them. And he pulled me out. He put me in a place all by myself. Amen. After I got them fussed <laughs> He said, oh, let me get him off my back. I'm going to give him a place to stay real fast. <laughs> Amen. And so he gave me a place to stay in, and then someone paid the rent and light bill and stuff until I was able to pay myself. Amen. And then I was offered the opportunity to be a assistant pastor in a church an hour away from where I live. Amen. And every Sunday morning. Every, and, uh, and I drove. Amen. And when, and when my time was up there, God said, now I want you to go to, I want you to, go to Bible school. And, and develop your and, and, and I want you to go to Bible school and I and I said well God I can't leave these people you just when I first come to church one no one come but now that I'm here people start to come I said I, I can't leave them he said he did, he didn't he didn't say nothing else to me but the next day I saw this the next Sunday I went to church I saw this two deacons and I saw this man walking between the two deacons and the glory of God was all over him the glory of God was all over him and I'm telling you. I'm telling you, God, he showed himself strong. And people, let me tell you something. God wants to do it again. God wants to do it again. Are you ready, are you ready for, the, for the goodness of God to manifest in your life? Yes. Are you ready for the, the presence of God to manifest in your life? Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. Amen. So now, when we look at this, when we see what God is saying to us, we, we, can see, we, we see that God... Is called us. He's given us an opportunity to to be as He is. Nevertheless, holiness in Scripture, while associated with with more uh, up, uprightness, you see, we think that we have to, it's all about our our moral conduct. It has a lot to do with it, but that's not what God is talking about. God's talking about our inner man. Purify our hearts. Cleanse our hearts come to a place where we will see ourselves coming out of that situation. Remember what it said in 2 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Peter, not 1 Peter 2.9, 1 Peter 2.9, he said you are a chosen generation. He said you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. And he said he called you out of darkness. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has called us He's given us a, a charge to come out. Amen. To come out. Amen. And, and, to, and, to, and to walk right before God. To, live, to walk righteous before God. It's chiefly about doing, about doing the right thing. Amen. Doing the right thing. Amen. Rather than to be holy. You know, you know how, can you, how can you be holy if you don't do the right thing? You can't. If you're not, if you're not trying, if you're not, if you're still walking in sin and you're trying to live right before God, you're still trying to live holy before God. If you're not walking, if you're not walking right, you you can't walk holy because you're still walking in sin. You're still walking in sin. Amen. So God's given us, He's showing us something here that if we're going to walk holy, we're going to be clean. We got to separate ourselves. Amen. In Second Chronicles chapter. 20, chapter, in 1 Corinthians chapter 23, verse 13 says, let me just turn that real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 23. 2 Corinthians chapter 23, verse number 13. As she looked and behold, as she looked and behold, the king stood at the pillar, at the entrance, and the prince and the trump and the what a trumpet by the king, and all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets, also the singers with instruments and music. And, and and such as taught and sung with and sung praises. We see that God is is bringing. I think this is where the ark was coming in. 
I'm not sure because I didn't. Thank you, Lord. That's in the book of, let me look at another scripture here. In the book of Exodus, chapter 3. This is where I was talking about earlier, where Moses kept the flock. God is bringing us around to the beginning. And Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock of the, to the backside of the desert and came to a mountain of God, came to the mountain of God, even to Hebron, Hebron. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight. And the bush is not burned. Why the bush is not burned? And when, he, when, when the Lord saw that he turned aside he, to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. You know, like I said, Friday night we was here praying and I, I, I got engulfed in this glory. And when I got engulfed in this glory, I was impressed to pull my shoes off. While I was in here praying, I pulled my shoes off. Because I was in the I was in the presence of God, and I pulled my shoes off. Then I noticed the other man pulled his shoes off too. <laughs> Amen. And, and and then that one and that when I did that, that's when and, and we were coming to the close of the service of the prayer time, and that's when God said restitution is coming. Restitution is coming. And 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 God and God told and God told my wife that He was going to re, He was restoring back the things that the enemy has stolen and it was such a presence that we experienced amen and I believe that God is bring God wanted to bring you to that place my time is about up my time is about up but I want to take you I want to look at Leviticus chapter 16. Amen. Leviticus chapter 16. Verse 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the after the death of the two after the death of the two sons of Aaron. What did, how did Aaron's sons die? They offered up strange fire to God. You see, you can't go in God's presence any kind of way. They offered up strange sacrifice. And was and, and, and it was out of order. See? And, and what it goes on to say right here. It, <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, and after the after the death of the two sons of Aaron, and when is it when they uh, offered before the Lord and died and the Lord said unto Moses speak unto Aaron thy brother that he come not at all that he come not at all times into the holy place with, within the veil before the mercy seat which is upon the ark that is, is that he died not for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Amen. That I would appear upon the cloud of mercy. He Aaron was scared from that point, but uh, God told, told uh, uh, Moses to tell 
Don't be afraid. Amen. And then, and then it said right in verse number 23. Verse number 23 said, And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garment, which, which he put on when, when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. Shall leave them there. Amen. God is want us to pull off this old garment and when we come into his place, he don't want us, he wants, he wants to change. He wants to be different. He wants to come out in his glory, in his strength. He wants to come out knowing that we have been with him. See, when you know that you've been with him, you, you're not going to turn back in the world so easily. You're not going to quit and go back so fast. You're going to examine your heart. You're going to examine your situation more carefully because God is calling us back to himself. He's calling the church back to reconciliation. He's given us an opportunity to do something ourselves. Sometimes or someone is made holy when the Almighty who is himself set apart <coughs> from the creation. See, God set, God set us apart. And I told my wife last. I told my wife last night when when God revealed a certain thing to me. I told my wife last night we was laying in bed and we had to talk. And I said, "Honey, you know God set me apart, even for my family. Then when I came here to California, I was I got I went through some different some difficulties. I went through some changes. And then when when God restored me back to my rightful position." He separated me again. He said, come out from among them before you become contaminated. See, God have kept me for such a time as this. I'm not perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect by a long shot. And that's why it's so important that we understand this message because God is calling us closer to him. And that means we have to Ask him to help us to live the life he's given us to live. He calls to live. We can't do it in our own strength. I ask God every day, you know, I ask God every day, Lord, help me to be holy. Help me to present my body to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is my reasonable service. According to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that I would not be conformed to this world but that I be transformed by the renewing of my mind, that I may prove what is that good and accepted perfect will of God. See, as long as I'm trying to do it in myself, God is not going to step in. But if I step back and let God handle, and let God do the leading, see, he said, they that are sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And if the Spirit of God is going to do the leading, and I'm going to follow him, he's going to show me exactly in my life, the thing that's in my life that will be hindering, that is hindering, hindering me, He's going to show me how to deal with it. He's going to show me how to get rid of it. And that's what he's done. And that's what he's doing. Because my mind, before I went to this trip over in, in, uh, in Pakistan, this, this last trip, I, my mind was bombarded by a lot of things. And I told my partner that went with me, Brother Fernando, I said, I said, I said Brother, when we go this time, God not just going to work on the people that are there, but he's going to work on our hearts and our minds as well. When we come back, we're not going to come back in the same condition that we went. This is what I told him. And I said, this time when we come back, we're going to come back with a, a fresh anointing. We're going to come back with a, 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 a we're going to come back with a, 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 a presence of God that he wants to use to affect California. And so we, I'm getting ready to, first of the year, I'm going to Said, I'm going to put together a conference and Brother Fernando and I, we're going to come, we're going to, hope, we're going to do this conference, amen, and we're going to release that same anointing in California that we released in Pakistan. God is going to touch California. I'm telling you, I know it in my heart. I know it in my heart. And you're going to be my musician. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Amen. Amen. I may have two of y'all playing during that time. Two musicians playing during that time. Amen. We'll see. But uh, I like you. I like. I like you. I like. I like the way you play. I like the way you you you, you sing. Amen. You know how to tap into the spirit. God has given us this opportunity to bring about a supernatural presence of God back in the state of California. California, <coughs> if California turn, so will America. And I believe that this is why there's so much ministry going on in California. Even, what's that man that just come to? Uh, Mario? Mario. Mario. See, these big, these, these known ministers are coming here because they see God is wanting to do something here. Amen. God brought me to the capital not to just be another minister here. God brought me to, this, to the capital here to affect the capital with the anointing. And, I have, and I've been, I, and the devil has done everything he can to stop it from happening. He tried to run me out of the city. They said, no, you, you can't set up camp here. You got to leave this city. And I said, God brought me here. And when the time comes, I will fulfill the purpose that God brought me here. I'm not going. He said, you, you have to get 50 miles out of this city. And I said, no. You see, when God have a plan, when God want to do something, the devil try to interfere before, long before it come to pass. Yeah. He tried to stop it long before it come to pass. Now, folks, believe me, there's about to be, there's about to come in the state of California one of the greatest outpouring of the Spirit of God like you have never experienced before. Amen. Many are going to have the opportunity to get their hearts right. Just like that federal judge came to me. He spotted me. He couldn't get his eyes off of me just last night. And he asked for prayer. How many other judges need prayer? This was a federal judge. I never saw the man before. But he saw me. And he asked me to pray for him. He said, "You, I saw you, and I see something different about you." And I, I, he said, and he started a conversation with me. And then he asked me to pray for him. And I believe, folks, that it wasn't an accident. It's the beginning of what God's getting ready to do in California. Amen. I believe that. So get ready. What God has given us to preach this year, it's been happening in the atmosphere. Even though a lot of, and we only, and I heard one other, I heard one more preacher preaching on this message. One other preacher preaching this message. And I said, and, I, and that thrilled my heart. I said, look at that. Using the same title that I'm preaching, they're preaching the same message. I said, look at God. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But that, folks, that, I'm telling you, that's what get ready to happen. Now I'm done. I'm done for the day. I'm done for the day. Glory to God. <laughs> you want to come and sure. it's time for us to prepare to give our tithes and offerings today amen you can mute that one I don't I just like the music in the background when I'm playing I, I love it it just helped me to flow amen but I want you all to, to set your heart right now and whatever God put on your heart to give give to the Lord Amen. Give to the Lord. And don't and, and don't look at it like uh it's a it's a, a don't look at it like it's, it's gonna hurt you to give. Look at it as a blessing to give. Because when you give, you say, God, I believe that you are God and that you're not gonna allow me to experience lack. You're not going to allow me to grow empty. I will have more than enough because you said in your word that you will cause our ground to give forth the fruit in the season. You said you will rebuke the devourer. Amen. 
you have an opportunity to do and to receive the promises of God in your life through your giving. You that with us by the internet, you can go to my website, and that's LarryBergenMinistries.com. Amen. You can plant your seed of faith, and you can know that God is watching over your seed. And he sees your motives. He sees the condition of your heart. And as you give, God said it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. You are giving into rich ground. Amen. And I believe that God going to bless you above and beyond. There are people that have come here that didn't have nothing. But when they start sowing into this ministry, they become prosperous. And when they got prosperous, well, you don't see them no more. Until something happens, then they come back again. I want you to know that I believe that this ministry is one of the most fertile ground that you can sow your seed in. I used to didn't think that way. But God changed my thinking. And I'm glad he did. And I hope he changed your thinking concerning this ministry. Sow your seed in faith. And let's believe God together. Father, I thank you for those that you have given to be sponsors or supporters or partners with this ministry. And I ask you, Father, that as they honor you by releasing their seed into this ministry ground, that they will experience supernatural increase in the area of their need. Not just in finances, Lord, because they may not need finances. They may have more than enough finances. But in the area of their needs, some of them might need finances. Some might need or their, you can touch them in their body, their health, God. But whatever they sow that seed, God, you're going to meet them at the point of their need. You said in your word that you rebuke the devour. We believe that, Father. And now, Lord, I ask you to touch everyone that is sowing their seed of faith. And let it be given back to them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall be given to their bosom. Bless them, Father, above and beyond their wildest dreams. Let them experience your goodness and your mercies. I give you praise. I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Amen. If you're here today and you need to acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you may want to repent, rededicate your life to the Lord. The Lord has given you an opportunity right now to acknowledge Him, to turn your heart to Him. And that time, and that you because today is the day of salvation, and your time is now. Will you come? Will you acknowledge Jesus Christ? Will you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? If that's you, I know that you are here, that you all say that you're saved, and that's good. But maybe you have did something that you have not asked God to forgive you of, and you want to make sure that your heart is in right standing with God, that if you would die right now, you know without a shadow of a doubt, you'll spend eternity with Him. Say this prayer with me. Only if you mean it. Because I believe that God will hear every prayer that is prayed from our hearts. Say this with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of all my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And 
and I believe you died for my sin. I confess my sins today and I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Father, I pray for all those that said that prayer with me, whether by the internet or rather here in the building with us. I pray, Father, that you will supernaturally move upon their hearts and upon their lives, touching them, Father, touching their bodies, touching their finances, touching everything that concerns them, Father, touching their hearts. And let the peace of God that's a passive all understanding keep their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. And God, I thank you and I bless your people and I give you the glory and the praise for what you're doing in their lives in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that it's done. Amen. You just gave your heart to the Lord. You made rededicate your life to the Lord. Right now, I believe that God is going to minister to you. God is going to strengthen you. You're going you're gonna to experience the peace of God like you never have. Amen. Now, if you're here today, you need special prayer, I pray for you right now. Anyone needs special prayer, I pray for you right now. shall be forgiven. As she forgive them, let her be forgiven also, Father, that it will not affect her heart and her emotions and her mind and her will. But let her experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. Let her keep, let it keep her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus. That she will think of those things which are good, those things which are pure, those things which are lovely, those things which are just those things which are honest, those things which are of a good report. God, you said, should there be any virtue, should there be any praise, we shall think on these things. I release that usha I release that anointing now in Jesus' name. And Father, let your healing anointing flow into her body right now. Right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Amen. Thank you for it, Father. You feel the pressure of God? I know you do. Because he's here. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your anointing. I release your healing anointing right now, Father, in the ligaments and in the joint, the shoulder joint, and in the tendons of the shoulder joint, in the name of Jesus. Let the mar be restored. Let the tendons be restored. Let the muscles be restored now, in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Come on, Keith. Let me pray for you. Father, 
in the name of Jesus. I cancel every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease that will come against his health, against his body, his mind, his will, his emotion. I rebuke every demonic attack in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Father, I release that anointing now from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And I speak to every organ of his body. And I command you to function as God created you to function. I release the anointing now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name. Be healed. Be healed. Now, in Jesus' name. Let the fire of God breathe upon him now. The fire of God. Shaka Rabasoma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is, brother. There it is. There it is. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Anybody else? No? Father, I pray for those that are with us by the internet right now. I release your anointing upon them. I thank you, Father, Lord, that your hand rests upon them in a supernatural way. And Father, tonight as we have our healing service tonight, I pray, Father, that people will come expecting with signs, wonders, and miracles. I release, Father, that anointing upon them now in Jesus' name. We thank you. We say that it's done. We'll see you tonight. You come expecting to receive from God. God bless you. We love you. Until then, have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lord. Just one.